All right, hey guys, Vince Comezzi. Today we're talking about the difference between ventilation and oxygenation. This is something that uh, is big in critical care, and it's uh, really a um, you know a fundamental piece of knowledge if you're going to be working with someone who's on a vent or anyone that's really sick, uh, for that matter. So ventilation is, in other words, how much air you're bringing in and out of the body. Um, the reason why that's important is because ventilation is the key in determining CO2. Um, CO2 has such a crazy high diffusion gradient between in your body and in the atmosphere that as long as you're moving air, the diffusion gradient will take care of the rest and you'll blow off CO2. Um, the two factors that you'd set on like your, you know, assist control, volume control type vent situation for this would be uh, tidal volume or how much you're breathing with each breath, the volume, right? So if, if someone had too much CO2, they're um, you know, hypercarbic or whatever, they have, they're not blowing off their CO2, it's because they're not ventilating, their minute ventilation isn't high enough. So you wanna increase their tidal volume or increase their respiratory rate. So if someone's CO2, you know, normal values are like 35 to 45. If someone's CO2 was uh, 50 or 60, we'd want to increase their minute ventilation. The two components there and volume control ventilation that you can, can, you can change are tidal volume and respiratory rate. Um, you change those, you know, then you recheck an arterial blood gas or an ABG in a bit and see how their CO2 has adjusted or look for other factors. Um, oxygenation is, is a bit easier to remember because oxygenation is oxygen. Um, in the ambient air, Oxygen only makes up, you know, constitutes like 21, 22%, depending on a couple different things, of the ambient air. So the diffusion gradient isn't as wonderful or strong as carbon dioxide is. Um, for that purpose, you can't just move air. You have to uh, change other, other uh, aspects. You have to try and change that gradient in your favor or make it more likely for O2 to diffuse into the, you know, into the alveolar or into the lungs, right? Um, the two factors that you would change here on your vent would be PEEP, which increases your freak or your functional reserve, uh, residual capacity. PEEP stands for positive and expiratory pressure. Uh, a lot of people will say on a vent like a physiologic PEEP, meaning kind of like what normal people can accomplish by themselves is five to eight millimeters of mercury, something around there. Usually uh, in your volume control, we'll, we'll um, you know, put someone, start someone on five if there's not another reason to go higher on PEEP, just to give them that physiologic level. You never really have a PEEP of zero. Um, uh, yeah, so that's PEEP. The reason why PEEP increases your, or affects your oxygen is because it prevents derecruitment, it prevents atelectasis or the collapse of those alveoli, right? So if you stent that alveoli always open with a certain amount of pressure, they won't collapse and stenting it open will maximize that diffusion gradient, maximize the amount of O2 molecules in that uh, alveolus that'll um, you know, then hopefully diffuse across and affect your O2. The other thing um, to talk about here, peep, another way people talk about this and it might be reported on your vent is mean airway pressure. Really, what your PEEP is doing is it's affecting your mass, it's kind of like a surrogate for mean airway pressure. So increasing your PEEP, which is something we can control, will increase your mean airway pressure, and that's what stents open the airways, and that's what increases oxygen diffusion into the body. Um, the other thing that you can change here is FiO2. FiO2 is fraction of inspired oxygen. So right now, if you're just breathing room air at, you know, sea level or whatever, that's 20 or 0.21, 21% or 22% or whatever it is, um, that, that's pretty low. Usually when we have someone on an event, we start them out on 100% or 1.00 for their FiO2. And then, um, you know, there is such thing as oxygen radicals, oxygen toxicity. So we try and get them down off that FiO2 that's so high like that as soon as possible. Um, usually, uh, you know, you, you won't see someone on an event lower than 40 sometimes 35 or 30 FiO2, but usually 40 is the lowest that most people will go. If someone can maintain uh, a good ABG with an FiO2 of less than 40, they probably don't need to be on a vent, is usually what people say. In any case, 60 is the highest you want to keep someone on to avoid that oxygen toxicity if you can. So in review, when people talk about the difference between ventilation and oxygenation, ventilation affects your carbon dioxide. The two factors you change in the vent is how much air is going in with each breath and how often you're taking those breaths. If you're breathing more, you're gonna blow off more carbon dioxide. It's gonna be expelled from the body easier. It's got a good diffusion gradient that easily diffuses across the uh, alveolar membrane. 
we're talking about oxygenation. If someone's PaO2 on their ABG is crap, if it's, you know, uh, 45, that's too low, then we want to either increase their PEEP, i.e. increase their mean airway pressure, or we want to increase the FiO2 to a certain extent. Um, you know, if, if you have to put someone on 100%, that's usually a pretty bad picture. And you have to, look, you know, look at reasons why they can't oxygenate. Is it ARDS? Is there something at the alveolar membrane that is preventing the diffusion of O2? Um, you have to correct like fluid, et cetera. Um, that's ventilation versus oxygenation. Thanks.